Welcome back, everyone, to the lovely and beautiful, as always, Tong Hai. And we are kicking off game number two of our first series of the final night of the first week of LPL 2022. Lyric, you've been a stalwart companion through the chaos that was game number one. But we got a karate tournament to finish here. Yeah, and you know... I'm just happy we have IG and OMG playing two teams who are not afraid to scrap, who both do have very mechanically good players. Unsurprisingly, Cream is the MVP. And you know what <laughs> Mr. Miyagi it? says? Man who catch fly with chopstick accomplish anything. And that's what Cream did in this game. This man caught a <laughs> bunch calling? of flies between his chopsticks. Are you calling IG a bunch of flies? <laughs> That, 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 that is what I'm calling them. Wow, wow. Because the package, Mazel, the package hit. The Rockets hit Kareem was uh, <laughs> setting, well, not setting over there, following the setup given to him by Cold alongside yeah. Abel. And this was always the strength of this OMG roster in 2021 is the way that they are able to, to coordinate, to go in at the same time with a lot of these engages to be able to find the team fight wins. I think they're one of the best team fighting teams that we had in 2021 summer. And it shows that in 2022, that is not slowing down. Yeah, it was the fact they had so many tools to work with, so many things for IG to deal with, right? You have to watch for the packages from Creek. You have to watch for Abel's getting those infernal triggers. Cold's insane magnet storm engages. But my biggest question now is what is Mr. Miyagi or if you will, Cobra Kai saying to the other side? Because IG have to find a way back into this series. You know, this is where uh, you know, John Kreese comes in and he says, <laughs> like, there's no there's no losers in this dojo, boys. And uh, yeah, we're, we're going to find out if IG keeps it up. Maybe if they come in with some low blows, some dirty tricks. Oh, no. Uh, I feel like they tried to in game one with the vein pick, but it did yeah. not pan out. IG I need more raids, realizing man. in game one. Yeah, we're, we're done. We're done because they're taking away the Samira. They're like, yo, we are not dealing with that again. I want to see if IG prioritize the Corky because the Corky prio, the, the way it's risen so, so much in the past few days, it's just been insane to see. Yeah, and Yukai definitely scoops that one up first pick for IG. Four bands towards ADCs, the tried and true trio, but plus the Samira. Yeah, Kali and Nidalee to boot. OMG on the red side this time around, though, so changing things up just a tiny bit. And kind of surprisingly, we're going to get our mid lane matchup to start off the draft for both sides, I would think, if they do want to lock in the love lock here for OMG. Yeah, it seems like not wanting to wait to 4-5 for things okay, to be I, I, like I like this a lot better. I like this a lot better. What a surprise. What a surprise, Mazel. So, for context, we're just going to keep going with numbers. This is our 23rd Corky game and our 17th Victor game. The third most played Jesus. mid laner is Vex at seven games. It is pretty much this matchup every time we say that every game, we will keep saying it in a way of complaint. And Xin Zhao is also locked in. Holy Jesus, I'm shocked. <laughs> Things going pretty uh, pretty safe right now is Shun locks in the Lee Sin and the Gwyn is picked up for IG in the first phase. I do got to say, though, we are getting a bit of difference from how the first two days went because pretty much days one, two, and three were all like, okay, you pick your jungle, you pick your, your bot lane in first rotation, you save mid and top for four or five. IG this time around feel more comfortable going into the depths of the AD carry and support pool for the fact that all the S tier ADs were banned away. So it's like, hey, let's get all the strong champions in our solo lanes, save that for four or five. We are going to get Shanji on the Gragas once again. So definitely prioritizing the comfort coming in on these AP champions. We saw in terms of laning phase, he did completely fine uh, last game. I would not recommend going for another dive. Maybe if you do, do that though, we get like three men up towards the top side this time around if you're going to go for a uh, dive against Quen. But yeah, myself, keep that away from me. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I don't know how successful that's going to be uh, last time around. It's a bit of a yikes. Uh, that's definitely going to be going in the highlight reel montage at some point for the LPL this year because that was absolutely nutty. Uh, it is into the second phase here that we had the Gragas picked up for OMG. So taking some tools from last game, but as well as utilizing some that IG had picked up for themselves. And then we have the Zyla first ban by OMG, followed by the Rel actually taken away by IG. 
Now for OMG, I think you have two ways to pivot into the spot lane. You could either go with something like an Ezreal and play off the fact that you do have the, the victor against the Corky, play off the fact that you will have an AD carry that will ultimately outrange whatever the side of IG picks up. You have Disengage coming from your Dragas and top side and lean a little bit into that. You might be lacking an early lane pressure, but you should still have consistent push coming in from the victor to make it okay. I think the second route you could go is something like a Jin or a Varus. Uh, have a safer and a, a bot lane with more presence in mid game, but I think you'll lack some of that late game strength if you don't go with the Ezreal. Can we just go back to when nobody cared about the bottom lane and like everybody just let ADCs do whatever they want? I don't like this anymore. We have literally almost all the bands, but two are focused towards the bot side of the map. <laughs> and we have six ADC bands to boot. Like that is insanity. And we still have powerful picks on the table for, for the ADC pool. We have the Kaisa still, the Jin, the Ezreal that was picked up for Abel. It is crazy to me. The pool that is such an ocean right now, it seems like in the LPL and the Rakan is picked up by IG. And I would expect the Kaisa to be what follows, and IG just going to lean back into a comp that does want to all in. Again, OMG did follow the the kind of initial path that we set out for them if they picked the Ezreal, in terms of having the the height potential to come out, having the disengage and the zone control. For the side of IG, it will be quite interesting, because you are playing a little bit on a knife's edge from the fact that you don't have any... Like, you don't have, like, a Nautilus or something that yeah. can mindlessly run forward, right? Rakan, you do got to be a little bit more delicate with the way you are chaining your engages. Either going in with Lee Sin or coming off on a flank. Lee Sin is the <laughs> same. Coming from behind with a kick. And we no! get Cold Zumi. <laughs> look, at, look at the grin. Look at the oh, cheeky little no. smirk on his face. That's just the worst. That's the worst kind of person. You know what you're doing. I was going to say, so they highlighted it, but I would say the lack of priority on Leona, I felt like was very interesting because I do feel Leona is so strong right now in replacing that kind of full-on engage style. But the Yumi paired up with the likes of this composition, with the Ezreal, with the Zin Zhao, even with the Victor there, that's scary stuff to, to round out the OMG composition. Oh yeah, later on, this is going to be so annoying to play against, right? You you can go on the Zins out, you can look for picks continuously set up with the Qs uh, from the Yumi to en enable the slow, allow the Wind Becomes Lightning to hit off. You're definitely going to outscale the opposite side. Yumi just going to lock everyone right in front of her. And for the side of IG, I feel like we're... A <laughs> I'm so tired of saying this. I feel like <laughs> we're going to be looking at the Corky. Early sure? game, they're are definitely... You, hold on, are... hold on, hold on. I, I need you to be absolutely positive that's where you want to live. i'm tired of him as hell i'm tired oh, of it's it. only one so weekend for, man what are you gonna do for ig i feel like we're definitely gonna be looking a lot of how they can get ahead early if they are yeah. gonna try and set up some kind of like plays or dives early ganks on this bottom side maybe look for some some type of cross mapping or, or, or plays like that to set up and then especially post six because again we know if this if this Yumi Ezreal are allowed to freely scale, I mean your top side is going to become unkillable with the amount of sustain coming from the Yumi. Ezreal is going to be untouchable. Kai's is going to be jumping right into a Yumi ult every time she goes in, and uh, yeah, the mid and late game can be a little bit rough. A little bit rough, you say, but the thing for me is Shun on the Lee Sin. It fits the playstyle. We saw him being aggressive last game on the Zin Zhao. This time, looking for those unique paths for the Lee Sin. We do get onto the rift for the second game of the day of our long final day of the first week. We've got IG taking on OMG. You know what I think is very interesting about this matchup and with Yumi in particular as well is from my time as a coach and just kind of listening to whether it's coaches from other regions, players, analysts, is that I've, there's been like differing opinions on how to deal with Yumi. I think the... The one that's come out more fruition, right, is just hard targeting bot, looking for ganks, looking for dives, because she's a champion who can really do anything to survive these dives. Decently easy to stack waves on. But I have met teams before who also went the opposite way, say, hey, no, go shit down their top side, because one of the things that's so annoying and good about Yumi is how she enables a lot of bruisers to be these unkillable forces. Uh, I think I lean with the former. I think just targeting that Yumi is a very good strategy, and it looks like IG might do that. Hey, Abel taking some damage early on. The grand entrance connects, and Abel has the furnace flash. The ignite also burned there. Cold just trying to get some damage back. The cold in a very different predicament this time around. Not on the route, not on the front line engager. Has to play a little bit safer. 
three summoner spells for one massive hp advantage over to the side of ig they're starting to get some of these wards down on the bottom half of the map as well which is where shun is going to be pathing so it looks like ig are going to follow the the mantra of going up against yumi just putting so much pressure on that lane they will be able to have consistent control now. And they're, heck, they're even spotting out Aki. So having good vision to make sure that their own bot lane doesn't fall prey to any games. And also just want to, you know, go back to the conversation about bot lane and also the, the first strike Ezreal, right? And see where that ends up leading towards because it is a little bit different, I feel like, but still towards the same goal of trying to get as much money as you can to make this build work. And it is going to be interesting what build Abel does do. Yeah, we, we have see, still seen some of like the Divine Thunder normal Ezreal come out. You crown, also have crown, the crown, crown of the Shattered crown, Queen crown. build. Yeah, when you look at the side of IG, right, they do have a lot of burst damage come out. Uh, I think you're especially going to be looking at Shaolue G and Shun as speaking about Shun, looking for the gank mid. Oh, barely, barely misses the Sonic Wave there. First gank will not be completed for Shun and IG. You know, I actually think I would like the crown build this game. When you when you think about it, right? As able, as long as you don't die, you, your team is definitely going to win these extended skirmishes. They have a ton of AP damage coming out as well. Uh, just, you know, getting the AP, the mana, everything feels like it will be quite nice for able this time around. I don't think this is very much like a Divine Sunder. I'm just going to look to stay in range of you the whole time, auto you down. Uh, the extra security and the longer team fights is what OMG are looking for. Sustained damage and a little bit later game team fights, especially. But it, it's really cool to see the absolute differences in the strategy of the same team, right? OMG game number one, pedal to the metal. We jump on them and we do not stop. Game number two, a little bit more reserved, switching sides, right? And, and picking a composition that can bend but not break all the way. Yeah, for, for both teams, I, I definitely feel like there are some playable conditions there. We've already seen IG trying to set up some of the early aggression that we hinted at with Shun targeting towards the mid lane. Heck, I mean, the beautiful level one coming out from IG's bottom lane to secure themselves an advantage, though Able and Cold have been able to stay even in CS, so they haven't been able to find too much from that. And now Shun just doing a nice job of trying to keep up vision and see what Aki's doing. It's been Make sure they play the way they want. That's the that's the second scrying uh, that has found out Aki and his pathing. You know, we need to find. Okay, Abel. Oh wow! <laughs> I don't know if that's the two v two you wanted to take. Abel overextending and Abel just dies. Now Yuji is on the board. First blood for IG. I'm scratching my head a little bit at what we just saw. I mean, I know what we saw. We saw Abel be forward, get an auto off, Lucas pop out and press W, but uh, I'm not too sure why we saw it. My guess is we'll get a replay. I feel like in LPL, we like to show like very obvious replays of things that are just questionable and then, you know, question them. So here we go. Abel showing up. I don't know if he's seen Lucas. You would assume he has. Uh, Lucas has been in the lane the whole time. Just goes in. W automatically comes out from the Rakan. Able nowhere to go because he did blow his summoner spells from the level one. Yep. And phase shift forward. Still getting that first look for IG. Definitely on the path towards success that you want to be. Now we get three bodies mid laid to try to take down Cream as the roam timer came up for Lucas. Yeah, IG trying to keep control of mid. They know uh, Corky should lose this matchup as we've seen every game. So just consistently making sure Victor can't find those advantages. Does have to blow the Chaos Storm right now for his with tie off. Uh, I wonder if wanting to look for a bit of a reset himself. And OMG responding. Four man having to walk up to take control over River. We need to remember, Yumi not a champion who can solo walk through River by herself. Not safe enough. You kind of need to be escorted by your AP carry or jungler. As we do see OMG now answering back with their own vision game towards the bottom side. Vision in the Dragon Pit. Now up to the Dragon. Yet. Feeling more like a reset to come out for Aki at this point when the lane states the way they are and especially like, a lot of things still up in the air. We'll look at Shun's pathing down towards the bot side. Did get spotted out by the control ward that was put there. And so nicely done on that reset. Now towards the top side is Aki. Shun knows that this is his. 
even OMG uh, seem like they're conceding it. I saw some question mark things come up on Dragon on the bottom side. So OMG consciously kind of giving this up, realizing, hey, our, our bot lane and mid lane are not in a position where we can look for this fight just yet. Gonna pass once again from top to bot. And for Aki, I mean, you're just trying to slow the pace of the game down, right? You've already had some vision on Shun. You knew exactly what it was going to do in that play. And as long as your bot lane keeps scaling up, especially now that they have summoners back up, so a lot less threat coming out from this 2v2 of IG, and OMG will be making their ways into the mid game just fine. They will do so. I think Shun has had a very proactive yet not bloody performance so far, but that's going to be super, super important in this game. We kind of talked about a little bit of his draft. Meanwhile, Abel. IG's bottom lane is, you know, starting to find a bit of an advantage. Abel, though, is catching a wave. Rift Herald Mazel. Rift Herald is up. And when Rift Herald is up, teams go to Rift Herald. And he <laughs> there's potential action as Aki sits around mid lane. A Valkyrie there for Yukai to get away and Aki not gonna full crash. Oh my gosh. That whole series of events, man. If Aki hits that, he knows he doesn't have Valkyrie. It would have been an absolute storm to follow, but does not find him out, and the back comes through for Yukai. And now IG rotating their bot lane over already. Aki still kind of hiding his presence. They don't know he's here. Looks like he's waiting for Kareem to push out this way before he starts making his way up. IG will have numbers advantage first with the fact that OMG's bot lane is still making their way, but the fact that Cream was still in lane means that IG are going to have to answer away before they can walk into this topside river. Looking for a death brush right now, and Lucas is about to walk straight up to it. He knows what's going on, realizes it. It's the health into the, into the non vision bush oh, there for Shun IG. and Nady were doing it the whole time. Yeah, they literally were. Shanti is at the pit, but the Rift Herald just taken by IG. Shun picks it up easily. No harm, no foul. No, I'm disappointed by OMG. And you know what's funny? Now now that I've figured out how to just slam these Karate Kid quotes into here, I feel like this one is a very LPL one. It's okay to lose to opponents. Must not lose to fear. That Dude, that is the LPL. That is the it LPL. Is. Like, you, is. Could go in and, you could go in and fight and die. It doesn't matter. But if you, ooh, if you're scared, if you're just, if you're just sitting there not willing to fight alive. out of this league, Exactly, <laughs> and that is what that is what we saw there. OMG lost it. Uh, Aki is trying to check out the Krugs there, but sees Nani and shit. Yep, oh, there he one v one. Luke is coming up here to make it not a one v one. The flash is there. The chaos storm is not enough. Cream goes down. I just love the amount of emphasis that IG have put on this mid lane. We've seen both Lucas and Shun hovering over so consistently, so Cream hasn't been able to find any advantages. IG have pretty much consistently kept pressure up in mid lane with just uh, sheer numbers advantage throughout the course of the game. We're going to see here, you're kind of looking for a bit of a trade. You can tell he's baiting him in. Gravity Storm and Chaos Field both come out. Lucas flashing forward with the E into the quickness, then following through with the W. You would kind of luckily able to back off to throw a rocket, and they guarantee that kill. Man, Lucas is still going on the top side of the map. Yeah, he is. This guy is enabling everyone. Working out beautifully. The Khan looking real good for Lucas at this point. Both main carries having one kill to their name. It's going to be nice as Kraken Slayer completed value AG. Crack Slayer just coming out right. Just once again. Kind of guarding the top tower. Still on the opposite side, speaking about items though, Abel has had the Essence Reaver for quite a while, right? Going for that as your first item. Pretty nice early game power spike with the Spellblade active uh, damage coming after you can use an ability. So he will be able to contend in some of the shorter trades to try to win off of the range advantage he does provide. And with the fact that gold is still even at 11 minutes into the game, I think despite the fact that IG have been more proactive, OMG are still playing towards their win condition. Yeah, they absolutely are. And slowly but surely going to come alive for them. They just have to make sure not to bleed out too heavily like last game for the opposite side, right? Where IG were just bleeding out that early game. There was no hope to kind of stem that. And OMG are kind of in the same predicament right now. But with a little bit of a brighter future, it feels like. Now, as second dragon of the game comes online in about 20 seconds, a lot of bodies for IG down this way to make sure they secure it. 
both teams look like they are pivoting around that one. IG, though, are the team that does have control, getting even more deep vision down. So anywhere that OMG walk into, they will know. Looks like potentially going to try and set up a pick around mid lane with this Rift Herald. Just goes for the engage there. Chaos Storm is right there as the backup from Aki is enough to dissuade them from it. The TP completed from Shanji as well. Now you got Abel here. Shanji going <laughs> for the kill. Lucas dies and first kill goes to OMG. And they're going to definitely need that one. This is what we talked about, right? About must not lose to fear. That play looked, looked very questionable. Lucas saw both members there. I was actually really surprised with the middle of the dive. And it just keep posturing and be like, hey, I'm here. Don't walk too far forward. You're not allowed to get Herald. Allow for the Herald to just get the charge off for free. You back off. But no, actually commits to the dive. Kareem just throws down the gravity field. And I love Shanji walking up the last second being like, yo, this is mine. <laughs> We're going to see here. Lucas did see both members. Instantly, gravity field does go down. Lucas gets locked up, takes a ton of damage. Eel must be used. Lucky doesn't go down yet. Shanji though. E flash casket. Bam. Wait. Death. Hey. More death. What? Aki and Ko got the bot lane dive in between tower on the Zhaoyuji. Wow. We gotta see a replay of that one. Yeah, it looks like Lucas wasn't even there, so three-man dive onto one. That's how Xiaoyu AG was able to go down. IG now just answering a little bit late. OMG now positioning themselves with about a 1k gold lead. Uh, so even despite the fact that IG have been the early aggressors and the ones trying to find all these proactive plays, again, it's come down to the counter plays coming out from OMG that have kept this game so, so tight-knit. And that whole setup was in favor of IG around the dragon that was spawning in just a few seconds. I know second dragon isn't that big of a deal, but setting yourself up faster than OMG, I feel like is very important in this game right now because you do not want to get to late game for this team. And they end up just giving up the dragon and that kill over the mid lane. So things not going as planned per se for IG. And, you know, like you're saying, things not going to spend for IG, but for OMG, it's also nice to see this continued evolution. Uh, last split, another push off from team as oh, King comes out. That's huge. He's gone. Lucas. Yep, they just delete Cream off the rip. Yeah, not beautiful angle coming from Shun. Makes his way around the Raptor camp. Comes over the wall, finds the kick. Now we're gonna have more consistent pressure on this mid lane turret. Aki is here though, they're going in. They have a lot of damage there. Aki is just going forward. He does have a lot of support with Cold and you just see how crucial this Yumi is to the composition. He almost loses no health here. Yeah, we can see what's gonna happen as this game goes longer with uh, what Cold will be able to do. I still don't mind Yumi. Uh, maybe I used to mind Yumi, but not anymore. You know, R Rusty's out there on Twitter. He's mad at Yumi for all of us. I think Corky definitely is completely taken over. <laughs> Corky is the new Yumi. So now we need to definitely not Corky skin that is the new Yumi. Uh, Nani just walking it, into the 1v3, it looks like, trying to dissuade them. And look, look at the mini-map, Mazel. Yeah. Shao uh, is on the opposite side of the map. There's no way for him to get here. Yukai also just used the package. So, IG, back away from the Rift Herald fight. Yeah, this is a very delayed response coming out from IG. And this is something we just see a lot of. Honestly, probably one of the most common mistakes, uh, I feel like, in LPL games about whether responding to late rotations in terms of where enemy already controls right. It's like, okay, it, even if you wanted to contest, uh, you, you, you knew when Herald was spawning. If not, just completely commit to the full trade side. You could have already taken this turret. You could have already had deep vision in the enemy jungle. Maybe you could have caught Abel off in transition when he came back down, but massive missed window for my G. He is, but they're still trucking here. They've still got the Corky. Insane, crazy stats this build will have later on. And Value Edgy just trying to hold on as this Kaisa to get into the game team fight. Now Lucas pulling the trigger again onto Abel, but can't find it. Tower about to go down. Aki and Cold are here. And this is the combo you're looking for. You've got Aki with the Yumi on top of the final chapter. Helps seal the deal. And Abel gets one kill. Xiaoyu Edgy tries to use the killer instinct, but will die as well. And Cream coming through clutch. OMG are on a rampage at this point. It just feels like they have taken control of the momentum. Especially when we've been talking about that OMG's comp play this game, Gates is going to be so annoying to deal with. And they are already finding their advantages at 15 minutes into the game is huge. IG are answering, at least in other lanes, Yukai picking up a turret in the mid lane. 
For OMG though, they just have the ability to keep going. And I don't see how Shun's gonna put any damage down onto Aki while Cold's attached. So what is, like, I know the ability is called Killer Instinct for Shao Yue, but the fact that Aki is looking so comfortable in knowing when he can go in to 1v3s, 1v4s, unmatched fights, because it's incredible right there. The backside fight against IG, who were the ones putting in pressure, and the thought of, I've got cold on me, we've got final chapter, we've got range with the Ezreal, let's get it! Yeah, we're gonna see here exactly what happens. Cold pop from Yumi, win becomes lightning. Instantly, Aki goes in, they lock down Lucas. And it just comes from what we talked about with uh, how much Aki is enabled by this Yumi. Able very, able easily, uh, having the ability to close the distance and just make sure the collapse comes full force. And Aki now, with cold on him once again, can just keep just running at IG. He into, doesn't care. Like, he's literally walking into a 3v5 right now, and it does not matter. The dragon getting so low, there's the grand entrance inside. The dragon goes over to Aki. They claim the second dragon of the game, and now OMG are taking the team fight. Oh my god! You are dying out here onto the rift! The vital chapter is alive and well once again, and Shanji's trying to make it stick. He's got the damage, but can he get the actual keep up here? The body slam is available shortly, and you've got the follow up from Abel. They take down Shao <laughs> it and it's just slow but sure death coming to IG. You needed to sweep the leg, Johnny. You couldn't do it, and now OMG are about to win this karate tournament. I absolutely love Ashaji and Cold chasing all the way to the fountain. Slow's coming off the barrels. Slow's coming off the Yumi Qs. Now they've not only picked up a bunch of kills, they're pivoting into a turret mid lane. They're gonna get a vision control topside for Baron. OMG just got everything on the map. At a snap of a finger, it's a 5,000 gold lead for OMG. They just took this game, flipped it on its head, then turned it back around and flipped it again. It is insanity right now, what Aki is able to do with Cole. Yeah, Shun instantly kicking away. Aki doesn't do anything, don't move him out of the pit. You yourself have to run away from that situation after it goes down. The rest of the verse falls up, Shun has to run away. I love Shanji for continuing to follow up. Beautiful cast coming out from him, and I love that they realize they can just keep running them down with the amount of uh, chase-up, the amount of slows that they have on this team. The exhaust still there for Cold, he instantly uh, popped onto the enemy eight carry, and Shanji and Cold don't stop. They go all the way for the kills, Vizel. There ain't no stopping the big man once he's rolling, and Shanji, Cold combo, honestly, Cold with anybody on this team is terrifying and that's exactly what we pointed out in the draft when we saw the yumi locked in and now omg using that yumi to control space so well shanji clearing out some vision ig on the opposite of the map and they're spotted omg can start baron they are oh no the baron is just burned down and yet another objective goes to omg with no response unless lucas and nady can do anything they're committing tp it's too late too little Baron's already down and OMG ready to take the fight afterwards. Final chapter coming away. The damage dealers are on the side. Package come to split the fight, but he's immediately taken out of it. And now Shanji with cold. They are unstoppable. And OMG want to make this a quick night. Yudakai dies and it's just Nani. OMG following up with the success in 2021, pushing forward into 2022 with this new top laner. They're, they they have so many monster. options in terms of how they can play the game. He is popping off cold right alongside him and cream as well, dishing out the damage. I was high on this team already to start off the season because of keeping the rush. I believe in continuity. I believe in building up your product and knowing what you have in your in your chamber. And OMG are looking so damn good with this roster and it just makes them one of my favorite teams at this point they are all handling these pressure moments so well and the decision making that killer instinct i was talking about earlier it is so alive and present yeah and i mean we come into the replay but i feel like a lot of what matters is what came before this uh now just all the members of IG are so close, OMG easily able to chase down. But the zoning that started off this fight, 
to come out from Cream with the gravity field, the fact that they had the vision control down bot side to spot out Shun and know they can instantly start up the Baron, that's what led to this. IG were forced to get to a position of trying to, to stop them, but they were so far behind it just opens up the engage. Cream is 100% Cream might be in trouble here. though. <laughs> yeah, Luke is waiting in the bush to TP also called here. Chaos Storm is a lot oh, though, and dead? they pull off is he now Luke. Almost just dies. They double TP'd for this, and no, it's all doomed for IG. Aki almost gets the win, becomes lightning connection onto Lucas, but Lucas gets out with a nicely timed flash. Sanji has the speed, the prowling projectile. One more boop. It's not enough. It is the final <laughs> chapter for oh, Cole solo gets the kill. Because why not? <laughs> solo kill for the... the Wonderful at this point, Yumi in this game and OMG have snowballed out of nowhere against IG and they will claim this series 2 0, but they got a couple more kills to get under their belts here if they do want to do so. The last ditch effort from IG is not going to be enough. Shanji's getting a little bit lower. Aki goes on to Shun. Dragon Rage kick back, but it's not enough. Zhao Yuji trying to make.